Okay, so in this video, we will consider a sequence of integrals that will lead us to wanting to make a u substitution, so a proper change of variables. So suppose we start very easily with the integral of x times x squared plus 1 dx, so with respect to x. We are integrating over a product, so we have to multiply it. But this is easy enough, right? This is the integral of then x cubed plus x dx. And we can now simply use the power of rule in each term, which will give us x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared over 2 plus, of course, the arbitrary constant of integration. So that was pretty easy. What if we make it a little more interesting? What if we integrate x now times not just x squared plus 1, but x squared plus 1 squared dx? Well, once again, we have a product, and we can't integrate over a product unless we multiply it out. So we'll square this, then multiply by x, and once again, we'll have the power rule. So we have x times. If you square this, you'll get x to the 4 plus 2x squared plus 1. First multiplication, there's still a product here. Multiply one more time. Oops. We want to multiply. So we get x to the 5 plus 2x cubed plus x. And now we have a polynomial. We can use the power rule in each term. So x to the 6 over 6 plus 2 x to the 4 over 4 plus x squared over 2 plus the arbitrary constant of integration c. And you can, of course, simplify 2 over 4 as 1 half. Well, why not make it a little more interesting? Why not ask, can we integrate x times x squared plus 1 cubed dx. And you see where we're going with this. You're saying, oh boy, we'll have to cube this, then multiply by x, then we'll have a polynomial, then we can use the power rule. But this will be a little more unpleasant. And I might say, what if I took the fourth power, or the fifth power, or why not do now the tenth power? And you're thinking, oh boy, this will be long. Because you'll have to do x squared plus 1 times itself 10 times. Once that's expanded, multiply by x, and then you can use the power of rule. But you'll have this huge expression. The idea here, can we do better? Or do we have to absolutely multiply this out so then we can use the power of rule? And the answer is we can make a simple u substitution. If you remember the rule of thumb, it is to look for a function whose derivative is multiplying the expression. And you'll see here that we can be off by a constant multiple that is never a problem. So what if I put the x afterwards? So I integrate x squared plus 1 to the 10th power times x dx. Now if you think of it, look at x squared plus 1. The derivative of x squared plus 1 is 2x, up to a multiple of 2, it's the same as x. So this is the perfect setup for a u substitution. So we let u be x squared plus 1. So let's replace now. We'll have the integral of u to the 10th power. And to find our dx, we need to find the derivative of our function u is a function of x, so we can differentiate u with respect to x, so du over dx. As we've said before, the derivative of x squared plus 1 is simply 2x. Multiply by dx, and so you'll have the du equals 2x times dx. But if you look, what we have here is not 2x dx, it's just x dx. So we want to isolate x dx as a function of u, so we must divide by 2 on both sides, and then we're going to get that 
one half du is now equal to x dx and that is our substitution you see this is u to the 10 check and the remaining x dx as a function of the new variable u is one half du so we replace one half du and now we're good to go everything in terms of x has been replaced in terms of u well one half is a constant multiple we can factor it outside of the integral so one half the integral of u to the 10 du and if you look at this integral now the problem has disappeared there's no longer a multiplication by x it's just u to the 10 it's a simple polynomial in terms of u so we can use the power rule one half stays there power rule on u u to the 11 over 11 plus of course the arbitrary constant of integration and now we're done with the integration but because the original integral was a function of x we want to give our final answer not as a function of u but as a function of x so we go back and we say okay this is 1 over 2 times 11 1 over 22 u to the 11 but u as a function of x is x squared plus 1 so replacing u by x squared plus 1 we get x squared plus 1 to the 11 plus of course c so you see that if we had done this directly by expanding out x squared plus 1 to the 10 multiplying by x this would have been a lot of work by making a clever u substitution the integral became essentially trivial and then we have our answer back as a function of x so that was actually pretty slick and you can imagine that if the power here was not 10 but the 100, multiplying out would be a whole lot worse. And you see, no matter what the power is, with a u substitution, it will always work in two or three lines. Let's look now at a similar integral, but now being a definite integral, just to remind ourselves that we need to also change the bounds of integration. So what if we simply tweak our problem and ask to integrate x times x squared plus 1 to the 10 dx and I will integrate this from 0 to 2. Well, we'll obviously make the same u substitution as we have the same integrand. As we've done before though, we'll put the x after, so x squared plus 1 to the 10 times x dx and now we make our substitution so u is x squared plus 1 take the derivative of u with respect to x and you get 2x as before we want to solve for x dx so multiply by dx divide by 2 and you get that 1 half of du is x times dx so first we replace the integrand x squared plus 1 is u that's u to the 10 x dx is just 1 half du but now remember the new bounds must be a function of u and the old bounds were functions of x so now we're asking well okay if x because of the dx if x is 0 what is u equal to? Well, plug it back in. If x is 0, this goes away, and u now is simply 1. If x is 2, what is u equal to? Well, if we plug in x equals 2 here, we get 2 squared 4 plus 1, 5. And so you see when x is 2, u is 5. And now we have the new bounds of integration, and now we're good to go we can leave the old variable x behind and integrate with respect to u as we have the new bounds of integration. So as we've done before, we'll factor the 1 half outside. Integral from 1 to 5. u to the 10 du. This is trivial. We use the power rule. So 1 half u to the 11 over 11 
and we must evaluate as u goes from 1 to 5. Well, we have a 1 over 22 that we can leave out, and then if we leave the 1 over 22 out, then we must evaluate u to the 11 when u is 5, that's 5 to the 11, minus, of course, the function at the lower bound, u to the 11 when u is 1, 1 to the 11. What we can do here is, of course, leave 5 to the 11 as 5 to the 11, as this is rather large, but minus 1 to the 11 is just 1. So we have 5 to the 11 minus 1 over 22, and that is our final answer. So you see, by making a u substitution, arriving at the final answer again was very short. If you don't think this is slick, well, just for fun you can try this on your own. Multiply this all out, so x squared plus 1 to the 10th power, expand the whole thing, multiply by x, you'll have this really big polynomial, power rule in each term, then evaluate with the fundamental theorem of calculus, and you'll arrive at the same answer. But I think you'll find out that making this clever choice of u substitution gives the optimal solution. And that's it.